Alicia Sedgwick. I am a communication coach and I am delighted to begin this exciting conference with our first speaker, Matt Griffin. Now, Matt is the founder and CEO of 311 Institute based in the UK. He is a world class, class even world class. He's a world class <laughs> futurist. You can tell that it's early in the morning in America, <laughs> not where I am. <laughs> He's a world class futurist, innovation and strategy expert. He is speaking today on exponential entrepreneurship, the age of sci fi startups. Welcome, Matt Griffin. Well, thank you very much. And it's great to be here again. So I hope everyone's well, that we are still virtual next year maybe less virtual. I said, who knows? If, you, if anyone knows a futurist, let me know. So my name is Matthew Griffin. I'm the founder and CEO of the 311 Institute, the World Futures Forum, and Exponential University. So the 311 Institute is an advisory organization that helps all the world's multinationals look up to 50 years out. So brands that you're using now, the likes of Microsoft, Adidas, all those kinds of things. Uh, as well as World Futures Forum, World Futures Forum and Exponential University are two phil philanthropic organizations that are aimed to bring the future to as many people as possible in as an equitable way as possible. So during this particular presentation, I am going to go full entrepreneur mode. That's it. So I am going to warn you because this is about the future of exponential entrepreneurship in an age of sci-fi startups. Now, I'm going to give you what every single startup and every single entrepreneur, frankly, doesn't want because they get enough of free advice. I know you'd like money, that's it, and I have more than enough organizations, entrepreneurs and startups saying, can we have some money? Because as a startup myself, that's typically what we sort of go off and ask for, but I'm going to be giving you free advice. So uh, cherish it. Now, if you scan the QR code, you can download three books. So the first one is on exponential technology. We'll come to that in a bit. Exponential how to innovate books and also exponential trends. So you have tech, innovation and trends and everything that you need in these books. So feel free to go and download them, have a read through them and actually follow them if you want some advice. Now, Within all of these particular codexes, we try to draw on all of the things that startups need. So firstly, you need a problem to solve. You need to know how to be able to identify the problems worth solving, the markets worth chasing. You need to be able to understand how you combine different technologies together to create your products, whether it's actually a website or whether it's something a little bit more science fiction like that we'll discuss. And then trends help you understand what's going on in the world so that you can be on trend rather than being hammered by trends. And we see lots of even the world's largest organizations being hammered by trends like trade wars and everything else and so on and so forth. Now, as an entrepreneur or as a wannabe entrepreneur, depending on what your situation is, you need to remember this. Firstly, nothing is impossible. Now, firstly, in order to really achieve this, you've got to believe in yourself. As an entrepreneur, you can experience hard times, you can experience high times, but you also have to remember that we have your back. And by we, I'm talking about the collective entrepreneur community. Um, now, as we start talking about entrepreneurship in the age of science fiction, we've already seen artificial intelligences that have been able to create businesses, design products, run and operate and scale their businesses. And we've seen these in Hong Kong, we've seen these in Wall Street, so particularly in the financial services sectors. So when we talk about the future of entrepreneurship, as entrepreneurs, you might very well be competing against machines as well as humans. How's that for sci-fi? Now, um, every single industry is being disrupted. And the reason I'm showing you this is because disruption brings threat to incumbents. But as entrepreneurs, as wannabe startups, every disruptive opportunity is an opportunity for you to take down an incumbent industry or an incumbent company. So firstly, we have food. I can take the cell from a chicken, 
excuse me, recently had COVID. Um, I can take the cell from a chicken, put it into a bioreactor, and I can grow chicken nuggets. I can do the same with any animal. I can grow fillet steak, I can grow duck, I can grow fish, salmon, tuna steaks, the whole nine yards. So when we talk about disrupting agriculture, we have the technology today to create real meat without the animal. We can grow crops in vertical farms without the land, and we can grow eight times the crops. This single part of the slide solves global hunger for two billion people, represents an addressable market opportunity of about 20 trillion. We have the energy sector. We are transitioning from fossil fuels to renewables. We now have over 1 trillion watts of renewable energy installed. This is a huge shakeup of the industry, presents a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs at all different levels. <clears throat> we have the financial services industry where we have fintechs trying to disrupt banks. You might know some of those. We have decentralized finance organizations trying to disrupt fintechs and banks. We have open source finance. And of course, we have autonomous finance organizations like those I mentioned in Wall Street and Hong Kong. We also have robo wealth advisors and so on and so forth. When we have a look at healthcare, we have in vivo healthcare remedies that now let us put someone with a serious genetic inherited condition onto an intravenous drip, feed them, metaphorically, a genetic engineering tool like CRISPR, and half an hour later, they no longer have their inherited genetic disease. We also have the potential today to 3D print human organs without needing someone else to die or without needing to revert to chimeras. And then, of course, in the transportation space, we are taking the driver, the operator out of every vehicle, whether it's a cargo ship, an aircraft, a car, and we are electrifying everything. So when we have a look at the vehicle industry, for example, in the future of mobility, when we take out the steering wheel, the pedals, the dashboard, you have a pod. Now you have an autonomous pod that you can turn into an autonomous shop as an entrepreneur that can turn up at my front door, either with vegetables or even with a sauna or a gym. We literally live in science fiction times, and these are good times to be an entrepreneur. We even have energy being beamed from space. This has already been tested, and by 2025, the UK, the US, and China want to build the first space-based power stations. There is a huge amount of opportunity, but from an entrepreneur's perspective, you might just want to clean people's houses. There is opportunity everywhere. It's down to you to figure out what it is that you want to do. Now, typically, when you're starting to look at entrepreneurship, it's highly likely that you've been looking at your existing job and frankly, just think that working for the company that you work for sucks. I know I did. So I worked for a whole variety of Fortune 25 organizations building businesses in the digitization space, the cloud space, the national security space, and so on and so forth. And frankly, when you're treated like a number, you no longer really go to bat for that company. And so today, there are lots and lots of people who are working for organizations that they don't think value them. There are lots and lots of people who think they can do better. And generally you can, but it's difficult because you go from being employed to being the CEO of your own little startup, but you're also the marketing director, the sales director, you are also the finance director. You're the tea lady or the tea boy. That's it. You do everything. You go from having one job within a stable company to having a hundred different hats as an entrepreneur. And this is why you need support. Now, it's also high likely, highly likely that you actually have a dream. You sort of see this concept of entrepreneurship and running your own business. And you think of being your own boss, having no one ahead above you that can just suddenly say, and we're making you redundant. Now, in Japan, we call this Ikagi, and I'd actually go and advise you to go and have a look up Ikagi. It's a really nice little framework that the Japanese have that helps you create a more balanced life. Now, from a thinking the company that you work for sucks perspective, you are definitely not alone. 66% of people in, the in Europe and the US do not like their jobs. This is a Gallup poll. This is a recent Gallup poll. 
64% of employees are not engaged. That's a problem. And that's a problem for businesses. It's a problem for you because you're not reaching anywhere near your full potential by see if this actually describes you. Unproductive. It's estimated, again, from surveys, that the average person is productive for about two hours, two hours 20 of every day, which just means out of a 24-hour day, you're wasting a lot of time. Companies aren't getting the best from you. And that's either because of their HR processes, the culture, or whatever it happens to be. Maybe they've got you in the job that you just don't want to do. Maybe you want to work for that company, but doing something else. And they just aren't nurturing you in the, in the right way. I've seen that lots and lots of times. And from a global productivity perspective, global productivity has generally remained stagnant at about 2% now for decades. So despite advances in artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, cloud, digitization, all these kinds of amazing technologies, global productivity is actually decreasing generally, certainly in the developed economies. And then again, another sort of little survey, 71% of CEOs believe that employee engagement is important to the success of their business. Now, putting this another way, because we tend to skew numbers, 29%, almost a third of CEOs, do not believe that employee engagement is important for the success of their business. So what are they doing, frankly? If you are working for one of these companies, get out, start your own business. Now, Gopreneurs, there's a new term in town called solopreneurship. Now, in the United States, 81% of small businesses in the United States are now run by individuals who do not have any employees. They're called non-working entities, ironically, from the IRS's perspective. They make up 17% of the United States workforce. They make up 24 million businesses that are run by solopreneurs, maybe like you. And this trend has been growing by 58% over the past decade, as increasingly people become more disenfranchised with the companies that they actually work for, but also as the cost of starting your own business falls through the floor. Because you can start up a website, you can buy a web domain, you can start up a website for about 50 bucks. And then you can use the marketing of the wonderful internet for free, generally. Now, there are a couple of rules. So the first rule is the one to three and a half billion rule. As an individual, you are the most powerful individual, the most powerful version of yourself that has ever lived. Now, what I mean by that is you as an entrepreneur or want to be entrepreneur can have an idea. And increasingly, thanks to our increasingly digital and connected society, you can take that idea, that new product or service, and you can put it into the hands or in front of the faces of three and a half connected people, three and a half billion connected people, faster than at any other point in history. So this means that one individual with a good idea and the ability to execute that idea can now change the lives of billions of people at unprecedented speed and unprecedented scale. That's good for you, which is why we are seeing more entrepreneurs coming through now. The second rule is the break the rules rule. As entrepreneurs will often tell you, the rules were made by other people to help them protect their own status quo and their own realities. Good entrepreneurs break the rules. Uber broke the rules, also broke the regulator's rules. And in fact, the regulator didn't even have any rules really to be broken in Uber's case. Same with Airbnb. So break the rules. Yeah, if we have a look at the future of food, for example, the traditional rules tell you you go and start a farm. They don't tell you to take the cell from a chicken, put it into a bioreactor and grow chicken nuggets that you can sell in Walmart. Break the rules, except for that rule. Don't break that rule. That's it. So it's a little bit of an oxymoron here. Now, let's talk about day one. So as an entrepreneur, you're going to need a few things. So firstly, you need an idea. What's the problem that you are looking to solve that people will pay money to solve? Secondly, you need hustle. You've really got to, you've really, really got to have hustle. Because what you will find as, a, as an entrepreneur is there are people to help you, but generally you've got to do it yourself. 
passion. If you are not absolutely passionate about the problem that you are solving, the products you are creating and selling and all that kind of stuff, you're going to fail. Because inevitably, if you cannot be passionate about the thing that you are selling or the thing that you are actually doing, however you find a way to be passionate about that thing, then it's going to consume you. You're going to get bored of it. You're not going to put your effort in. And then you might as well go and work for one of those companies I was talking about. Resources. When we think about resources, you need resources. You need lots and lots of resources. You're wearing lots and lots of hats. You're going to need lots and lots of skills. You're going to need to know how to fix your websites. You're going to need to know how to talk to technical, technical support. You're going to need to know how to do your tax. You're going to need to know how to manage PCI compliance or credit cards. You're going to need to know all of this stuff that when you started forming the idea of becoming an entrepreneur, you didn't even think about. And of course, you're going to need time because unless you have a full team behind you, it's generally going to be just you. And as any entrepreneur, any solopreneur will tell you, you need time because there are not enough hours in the day. However, you know, what about these things like call to actions? So be very clear with your call to action. What do you want the people that you are communicating to to do? So in my case, for example, go and download the codexes that I mentioned. Go and read them. Go and explore them. That is my call to action to you. Differentiators. There'll be lots in the venture capital community, for example, that tell you that you need to be differentiated from your competitors. But the fact of the matter is that differentiation lies in many, many different, different areas. Now, you actually don't need to be differentiated. That's my argument. Now, the reason why I actually argue that is because if you have a look at selling technology, for example, you can differentiate yourself with your customer service, but everybody says that. You can differentiate yourself with your partnerships, the products that you sell, the technical support that you offer, the credit lines that you extend, all these kinds of things. But frankly, lots of other people do those. So you need something slightly special, but don't get hung up on being differentiated. If you have a different differentiation, great. If you don't, don't get hung up on it. Mental health. As an entrepreneur, we don't talk about this very much. However, especially during the pandemic, mental health is your most valuable asset. Because if you cannot keep yourself standing tall, then you're going to crumble. And everything that you work for is also likely to crumble. So if you are having problems with your mental health, speak to people, reach out to the people in this community, and let's help. Liability. You're going to have to figure out basically your liability for the products that you create and sell, all the things that you do, the services that you offer. You can't just leave it to chance. It's a bit risky, but that's the point. Money. There's this myth that you need money. I get lots of entrepreneurs coming up to me basically at events and everything else and saying, look, I've got a great idea, but what I need is I need money to help me execute it and build it and everything else. You don't need money. You need resource. And that resource can be a developer in India that has a couple of hours a week free and is happy to help you. You don't necessarily need money. You need resource. So what you need is a creative way to get the resource that you need. It's a different, it's an entirely different problem to try to solve. Plans. Yeah. Go to any bank, go to any VC, PE, basically, whoever you want to go to. And they will say, as we see on The Apprentice, for example, what's your business plan? Now, by all means, put together a bit of a business plan and everything else. It can kind of act as your general roadmap. But frankly, the vast majority of entrepreneurs find that entrepreneurship basically is like playing a pinball, is like playing a pinball game where you are the ball. Because you think that that is the product that you're building and you're building it for that particular market. However, you go and sell it and that particular market tells you the product's rubbish. So you pivot slightly over here. And these people go, that's actually good but they need it 
modifying. So now you ping pong over right here. So the path of A to Z, when, it come, when we talk about entrepreneurship, it's not a straight line. It's a zigzag. It's a crazy zigzag. So plans, by all means, spend a little bit of time putting something together, but I wouldn't suggest you build anything more than two pages. I'd just do bullets. Um, and then skill. You will very quickly find that when you quit your day job and you sit behind your desk at home for the first time saying, right, I'm now the boss of a company, you will find that you call on a whole variety of different skills that frankly, you either don't know or you didn't know but you needed, you don't care about, but you need them to run your business, like designing a website, like figuring out what are your branding colors going to look like? What's your logo going to look like? How do you identify your target audience and how do you get to your target audience and all these kinds of different things? How do you figure out Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? How do you optimize your SEO and your keywords for Google search? I guarantee by saying that if you thought you wanted to create a product doing X, Y, and Z, you didn't necessarily think, well, how am I going to be optimizing my SEO? And yet you need to. So there's lots and lots of things that are going to impact your time and your sanity frankly. Now, one of the guys I said, I like this is Richard Branson. Now, remember I said hustle. So, hey, Richard, I'm going to be talking about you now. Sir Richard, isn't he? Of course, sorry. Um, so, Sir Richard's, one of my favorite quotes I is from Sir Richard Branson, and it says, if someone offers you an opportunity, say yes and figure it out as you go. Apparently, he's lived his entire life by this mantra. I think it's actually quite good because it really takes you out of your comfort zone. Uh, and certainly in, from my perspective, it's actually led me to have lots of really interesting conversations with interesting people about interesting things and actually do things that I didn't think even myself could do. So think about these sort of quotes. Get something, get something that inspires you. Find people who inspire you and surround yourselves with people who are inspirational and generally clever, cleverer, cleverer, more intelligent than you because these are the people, these are the ecosystems and environments you want to surround yourself with. Now, we started talking about sort of day one a little bit, but what about day two? Now, this is where I'm gonna call out one of my other friends, but I use his company all the time, so I'm sure that we're actually friends. So, Jeff, Very important. come on. What does day two look like? I literally just asked that. Don't laugh. <laughs> I don't know why they're laughing. What does day two look like? Yeah, I'd pass that. Um, I know the answer thinking. to this. Day two is stasis followed by irrelevance followed by excruciating, painful decline followed by death and that is why it is always day one thanks jeff thank you you guys call me jeff got i've got an idea for you now of course what jeff means by that is always be reinventing yourself. The world is changing around you. You need to keep pace with it. If you remain static, you end up being a legacy, but in the wrong kind of way. Now, now that we've sort of got that out of the way, you now need to do this. You now need to focus. What's your idea? Who are you selling to? What products are you going to sell? And what are you going to create? How are you going to get them into the market? Focus and be clear. And also KISS. Remember, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Do not overcomplicate things that do not need to be overcomplicated. And of course, start. And what else? As and when you scale, give me a shout, say hello, send me some of your products for free. That's it. I'm an entrepreneur, but I say I don't want to pay for stuff. Thank you. Be kind to your employees so you do not become one of those statistics that I talked about earlier. And just as a final thing, buy my merch. So visit the store, 
311institute.com. Buy yourself some cookies. Buy yourself a 311 mug. Why? Because I'm an entrepreneur. Give me money or resources. That does as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you very much, everybody. And I'll be seeing you again soon. ta -da. Bye. Oh, Matt, thank you so, so much. I loved that. And I learned so much. I, I love KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I'll never be able to kiss in quite the same way. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. That's it. And, uh, yeah, kiss the occasional stakeholder, but you have to do it in an HR-friendly way, obviously. That's it. Otherwise, your business might go down the toilet a little bit quicker than you thought. Well, you know, you were um, surviving COVID, and um, even despite COVID, you've given yeah. us so much that we can take away with us today, and, uh, and, and certainly that we should... Uh, believe in ourselves and nothing is impossible and you've certainly demonstrated that talking Absolutely. even though you had uh, you were suffering from from covid thank yeah. you so much i don't like covid <laughs> no, my pleasure so have a great rest of the day everybody and uh, see you all again soon take care goodbye thank you thanks matt